Studio Time with Ducky. Okay, welcome to the next Studio Time with Ducky. I thought today we could do like a dubstep based sound design in Serum. I have a track that I've been working on. It's not done yet. Um, and I thought I could just show you kind of like what I did and what I've been working on. I do want to say like, I don't want to do like standard cookie cutter, paint by numbers. Um, I put the phaser at 25% and I don't know why, like fat EDM rhythm based tutorial, you know, like I think there's so much cookie cutter stuff in EDM right now and we don't need that. I think it's cool to learn from other producers because you, you get like sort of philosophical ideas and you see the tools that they use and then it can be really like helpful in terms of figuring out how to make your own sounds. So I hope that that's what this can be, is just like creative inspiration, you know? Um, yeah, so with that being said, I guess let's just dive right in. I'll play you a little bit of this track. Can you slow it down for me? processing that I've done so that we can just see like from the very beginning. So this is my first sound and that's with no processing just from Serum. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off everything in here. We'll start with just a wavetable. I took this wavetable from the preset pack actually. I do want to say you can totally make this yourself. Serum has a really cool wavetable editor. Maybe we'll get into that in a different video. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with like getting a creative jumping off point, you know? I think it can be really inspiring. So that's what I started with. You can see I'm just modulating a couple of things with this first LFO. Save wavetable position, level, and then FM from B, which we can't hear right now because I have my second oscillator turned off. So that's what it sounds like just at the beginning. Now let's turn on my second oscillator. And you can see I have this sync one half window turned all the way up, which is just a thing I like to do when I'm doing frequency modulation. I like the sound. You can listen to what it sounds like. It just makes it really high. And then we have this like nice screechy effect going on. So here's what it sounds like now. So we're already getting that like dubstepy, scratchy bass characteristic. Um, and then I just have a sub going direct out and I'm modulating the level. And you're going to see actually a little bit later that I turned the like low sub information down um, because I'm using a separate sub, which is not something that I would do if I wanted the full sub pattern to like exactly follow get the kind of bass lead pattern. But I'm using um like a separate sub pattern to try to like create more movement and like rhythm um so that's why i have it separate otherwise you wouldn't typically do it because it can introduce like phasing issues so that's that but right now i just have this sub because it's kind of going to add more like low mids warmth and then i can cut it later So it's sounding much richer, but now it gets cool because we're going to do processing. So first I have hyperdimension. Hyperdimension basically creates the effect of like unison, like having multiple voices. Um, but first of all, it's less CPU intensive than actually going into your oscillator and bringing up unison here. Um, and I also think there's like definitely a distinct sonic characteristic of doing this versus like just going in and turning up unison. Um, so let's listen. So it's sounding wider now, and you can notice if you're listening on headphones or speakers that it's not affecting my sub, and that's because I did direct out. Um, and then I have a multiband compressor. I love this Serum multiband compressor because it has uh, an upward expander, so it gets this like really nice, bright sound. 
And then the last thing I have on this section is a reverb filter, which is Steve Dito's creation. Shout out. He's talked about it kind of vaguely on Reddit, like the way it works, um, but not like specifically. So we can't really see what's going on behind the scenes, but it has totally become like a thing in modern dubstep. And for good reason, like the sound is really cool. So if you want to see a little bit of what it's doing, what you can do is go into this filter and select reverb. And then this blue thing here shows you kind of what's going on in terms of like a frequency level, like on the spectrum. Um, so you're not going to see what's going on behind the scenes, but this is the effect that it would be having. So here I have a combs. I'm going to turn it back off so we can keep talking about the reverb filter. You can see I'm just modulating the resonance and the mix. So it's definitely got way more like body and character now. And then the last thing I've done is added a combs filter too. The combs filter in Serum sounds really cool. It's definitely another Steve Duda creation as far as I know. Um, it does not look like your standard comb filter, which is um, a type of filtering where you layer uh, the signal itself but delayed on top of the original signal. And what that does is it creates um, constructive and destructive phase interference. So basically, like, <clears throat> excuse me, if you layer two signals and they're in phase, then their amplitude is going to be the sum, right, of those two. They're potentiating each other, right? It's constructive, like it's making it louder or it's boosting that frequency, basically. Um, and if they're out of phase, if they're like boop, boop, they're going to cancel each other out, at least partially. And so it's going to be destructive and lower the amplitude. Um, so a classic combs filter is called that because it looks, like a comb. Um, and it just is like boop, 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 evenly spaced. Um, and this is obviously not evenly spaced, so it's clearly doing something a little different. But that's basically the idea behind comb filtering. So let's look at my combs with the S filter. Um, I'm modulating the cutoff and the resonance from this second LFO. And you can also see I have the damp all the way up, which I think helps with some of the like screechiness because you want it screechy for a dubstep, but you don't want like it painfully harsh. So let's listen now. So now it's got this really cool like talky sound. It's rich, it's got character, um, but I think it could be brighter and more powerful. So the next thing I've done is added some multiband distortion. And I got a shout out Noisia because I totally learned this from there um, in the studio with Future Music. And it's just multiband. I have clip control on the bottom, elastic trash on the second two bands. And I've just kind of played with like pre, drive, and gain to get the sound that I wanted. So let's listen to this. So it's so much brighter and it's like louder and forward and it's got warmth and like character, you know, like this is the sound that's driving the whole song. It needs to be rich and interesting. So that's that. And then the last thing I've added is OTT, which is like a very standard dubstep processing tool. It's um a Sarah, or sorry, an Ableton preset for stock like multiband dynamics. And I haven't messed with the original settings much. Um, I've just kind of lowered this sub information here um, to kind of clear out some space for my separate sub that I have. So I think it's sounding really good. Let's listen to my sub so we can see what's going on there. If you're on laptop speakers, I'm sorry, you may not be able to hear. So, pretty simple. And I really just have the sub in Serum. I choose the second kind of sign. I think it has more harmonic information. Um, and I'm just doing direct out. Really simple. that's what it sounds like right now. Let's go to my second sound really quick. Um, I basically just duplicated this first sound and then I messed with some of the parameters. I think that that's a nice way to do it because you get the like cohesion between them. 
um because i'm starting from the same basic place right but i'm just messing with it to create like movement and change so let's listen so you can hear probably i've cut the bass even more i think there was just like a lot more low-end information this time and also it's got a more like screechy characteristic so i wanted to kind of highlight that and clear out some of that super low information um and i haven't changed any of my settings on trash i have changed some stuff in serum so you can see i started with the same um wavetable but I've moved up the FM from B, so that's why we're getting that like screechy characteristic now. And then I've changed the wavetable position on my second oscillator. So if we go down like this, you can start you can see we're starting from um a different wave. And then still sync window, but it's not one half this time, so it's got a different shape. And then I've moved the cutoff of the combs filter like way higher. And this time I'm automating them or I'm modulating the mix. Um, and then still cut off in resonance too. And then I've also just taken off the reverb filter. So like, this is how I think it should go, you know? It's like you just mess around with stuff until something cool happens and you make something cool, save it, and then make something new that's cool out of that and just kind of carry on. Um, so that's what I did. And then I also have some processing on my bass group. I really like to process um my like big elements and groups because i think it creates this like sonic cohesion and like feeling of it being glued together um plus saves time <laughs> sometimes i don't know i go really crazy with processing so uh the first thing i did was some stereo imaging i pulled everything below 128 uh, just to mono, and sometimes i'll go as high as 200 do everything below that into mono because i really like this like powerful centered bass kick all that stuff so it's really just driving um but it's totally not a requirement no rules right and then for this kind of next section up to like 1.5 i just boosted that stereo width um because like this is the foundation of my song like this is the thing that's like really moving it forward so i want it to be big and epic and rich and like just fill up the space because um, I think that's how you get the, like, luxury of doing a pretty minimal track otherwise, you know? So that's that. And then the next thing I've done is a thing I love to do. I did some mid-side EQ. I used the dynamic EQ not necessarily for its, like, dynamic elements, although I do like the kind of sonic characteristic. Mostly, honestly, I love the interface of this one specifically, this isotope one. Um, I swear I'm not sponsored by Azotip, I just like their plugins. Um, and mid-side EQ is really cool because it allows you to treat the like center information and the stereo information separately. So I've done this little notch on the mids. I actually don't remember why, but I assume that something was peaking. And then for my sides, I've just done a high pass. So what I'm doing is basically getting rid of any like stereo mud because I've pulled all the important bass information into the center already. So now I'm just cleaning it up. Um, and you can hear what it sounds like now. Let me solo it. Yeah, so it's already sounding like cleaner and more present, which is cool. So then the next thing I've done is just invisible limiter. It is a limiter. <laughs> um, this is my favorite limiter. I just think it sounds so clean. Um, and I'm not pushing it super hard, just a few dB. Um, limiting is basically a form of like extreme compression, right? It's just like infinite ratio compression. Um, I've gone over compression briefly in my last video, but it's basically just selective attenuation, so it's bringing the volume down when you tell it to. So it's really good for capturing peaks. And then what it has kind of the effect of doing is making, like in this case, this group sound more glued together. Because when you're bringing down those peaks, what it does to your ears sonically is like you, you perceive the lowest elements as being more forward, because everything is closer together. So I think you get this really nice, like, cohesion um and then also i do oversampling which is really important to avoid intersample peaks 
So if you're only sampling like 1x, you can miss peaks in between, right? If you're taking these samples of the wave and that's when you're responding. Um, but a wave could peak like up to, I think, 3 dB higher, like in between. So oversampling eliminates that because it's just taking a sample of the wave more times. Um, and that's great. Like it's really important, especially for like mastering and stuff. Um, cause if you miss those peaks and it goes over, then when you're like converting it, say for streaming, um, it can introduce distortion, which you definitely want to avoid. It's not the fun kind of distortion. Um, yeah. So I think this gives us this nice, like just glued together, like solid sound. So that's that. And then the last thing I've done is added Volume Shaper. Volume Shaper is really cool. It's basically like hyper-controlled side-chaining, um, or like volume shaping. I mean, we use side-chaining like colloquially in dance music to say that we're attenuating volume based on something else, right? So like right now I'm attenuating the volume and I have done it synced to the beat, but that's because my kick is like a half-time four on the floor. Um, so it's essentially ducking whenever the kick comes in. And that's what we use side chaining to describe, like in dance music. But side chaining really is like anytime I'm processing a signal and I have that effect react to a different signal than the one I'm processing, right? Like I'm side chaining it. Um, but we use it to say like, oh, I side chained my leg base to my kick. So that's the effect that this is having is like my kick comes in, the volume dips, and then it kind of rises back up. And that's really important not only to create space because the bass and, or at least part of the bass information is in kind of the same frequency range as the kick. So I need to clear out that space, right? Otherwise it can get really muddy really fast. Um, but also I think it has this really cool like rhythmic effect. Um, I think it creates a lot more motion and it kind of drives that song forward, which is like the idea of dance music is like, movement you know at the end of the day like we're here to move to make people move um so i think it's just like really cool <laughs> i don't know As, let's listen to what it sounds like now totally do it and yay thanks so much for tuning in i'll see you for the next one okay bye